Okay, today's project is to show a demonstration on how to remove the motherboard from the GridTech 10 so it can be sent out for repair. The previous option to send the inverter for repair would be to send, send the whole unit off the wall or just remove the box top. When I say the box top, I'm referring to this heat sink along with the card that's inside. But today, we're just going to remove the card directly without removing the heat sink. Okay, a little disclaimer. Uh, so we do have high voltages in the inverter. So we want to make sure that the inverter is completely de-energized. Uh, there's four points of concern. So right here, this is the fuse block and the conductors that would be on this side is coming from the wind turbine. So make sure your wind turbine disconnect between the tower and the inverter is in the off position. You can also measure your voltage across these fuses. This is an AC voltage, make sure it's zero. On this side, we have the AC termination. This is the breaker, this is the wire that goes to your breaker. Should be 240 volts when it's energized. Make sure the breaker is off. Make sure you're reading zero volts. This capacitor here, this will be DC. Make sure you're reading zero DC volts. And the last spot is over here. These two screws right here, P and N. This is your DC bus voltage. This is a very dangerous voltage. And these capacitors will hold a charge even when it's de-energized. So you need to make sure you leave sufficient time for this thing to drain. I'd say at least 15 minutes. But to be safe, measure your voltage across these two terminals. This will be a DC volts and you should read zero. So I take no responsibility, all at your own risk and call me if there's questions. Here's a closer look at the card. So here's the motherboard card we're talking about. We're talking about taking this whole card off the heat sink. And that's what we're going to do now. First step is we want to remove these five big black cables. So there's one, two, three, four, and one right here, five. You can see each cable has a letter it's connected to. This one is the N can't see it and here's the U, V, and W. So we're going to label the cables so we know where they go when we're putting it back together. Okay, so the first step, we're going to remove the five large cables. We've got one, two, three, four, and one back there. That's the end. And you can see here I label them. So all I did here was use some white out and I painted a white mark on each wire and then I labeled it according to the terminal it's terminated to. So the wire goes through the CT and to the terminal. This one has an arrow. We'll get back to why I put an arrow on that one. So anyway, let's go ahead and remove W, V, U, and N. One thing I'd like to mention, that you notice that the wire has a piece of heat shrink. Not all of them do, but these here, I've already removed the heat shrink, and we need to remove the heat shrink so we can slide them out of the CT. Just use a utility knife, slice the heat shrink, and remove it. It's very simple. And go ahead and do that after you loose, uh, removed all the screws. Here's an example of that heat shrink. So I would just take the utility knife and slice that and then just peel it right off. Okay, to remove the wires, see this one's ready to come out. So we need to remove these three. So just take it, push it through the CT kind of hold your hand on the CT cover so it doesn't pop out but if the CT cover pops out like that no problem just snap it right back on the way it came off
and it just snaps in. Okay, I'm going to remove the others. Okay, there's my other three. I'm just going to move those out of the way. Now this cable here, I put an arrow. I also put an arrow on the board. The reason is, this cable comes through this little bundle. It comes from the AC, or the um, generator contactor. Comes over here, and then it goes through the CT, and then goes back through the bundle, and connects to the full wave rectifier, three phase rectifier right here, to this terminal here in the middle. So it's easiest to remove this wire instead of trying to take it off the contactor. And the reason I have a mark on it is so when you put it back together, you know the wire goes in this way because it is possible to get it wrong. So I'm going to remove that now. Okay, I removed that screw and we're just going to thread it through this little bundle. You can cut the tie wraps if you want. All right, I was just able to slide it right out of those tie wraps. And as you can see, it goes through the back here. So I'm going to pull that whole cable right out. And when we go back to put it back in, it should be pretty self-explanatory because we have an arrow. And we have an arrow on the board right there. Okay, that didn't take too long. We've got all the large cables out. Um, we can go ahead and put this screw back in over here so we don't lose it. Actually, I like to just hook this right back up. That way, in a month from now or whenever I get this board back to you, you remember where it goes. Okay, she's hooked back up. Just laying there, just a loop. All right, our next step is we're gonna unhook all the plugs. So we're gonna start with this one in the front. Go ahead and take that one off. We're gonna take those three off here. There's one in the back. There's one behind the board, way back here. Can reach it with a small hand. Then we have the three up front. This one, pay, pay close attention to it. It's on the connector towards the DSP board. Here's the DSP board. This one here, could fit in J6, but it goes in J7. That's the only one we can really mess up. So pay attention to that one. And take good pictures. So I'm gonna remove all those now. Okay, that was a piece of cake. There's 10 total, very easy to do. Next step, we wanna remove the DSP card. There is another video on YouTube that shows exactly how to remove the DSP card. One thing to note is when you remove this little plug here, this goes to the door display, notice how the, there's two places it can plug in. It can plug in here or here. They both will fit. It goes here and notice that the wires are closest to the, outs, the wall of the inverter. It can get flipped around, so take a picture. Make sure it goes in this way. Okay, to remove the DSP, we have four screws. One, right there, two, and then on the back of the unit, there's two more, three and four. So we wanna remove all four of those screws and then um, hang on to them because you're gonna put the DSP back on the board when you're gonna send it back to me. For removing the DSP, it's going to require a hex screwdriver. This is my favorite, Mega Pro hex screwdriver from Granger. It's going to take a 332nd, 332nd bit. Here's the information on the Granger page. So it's $25. And there it is right there. Here's a shot of a torque screwdriver from Amazon that actually could be very useful for removing the board and reinstalling the board. It's got a short screwdriver shank so we can actually use it to remove the board. It's got the 332nd, the 532nd, and a quarter inch adapter which we'll need for the capacitors. And it can torque the 17 inch pound we need and the 25 inch pound we need for reassembling. So, 
Amazon.com. Okay, with my 332nd, I'm going to remove the four screws. Uh, the last two screws are a little hard. They're behind this big terminal block. So you'll have to get in there and take a peek. The final one, I just used the tip because you can't get the screwdriver in there with the contactor in the way. But usually you can just use the tip and get it undone. Um, maybe it'll require a pliers to, to help you. Okay, now that that's done, we're just going to grab this. So right now, the only thing that's holding it are the pins that are behind this big terminal strip. So I'm just going to pry lightly here. And just kind of rock it. You don't want to bend the pins. Just grab it. Gently, it'll come right off. Here's all the pins. So hang on to this. We're going to reassemble it in a little back to the board before you ship it to me. So these uh, nine screws right here, again, these are going to be the 932nd. Um, screwdriver and there's nine of them so we have three in the front one one right here two and three then there's five here so we can see one right there one and then there's four kind of in a square here let's see if we can find them hang on okay here we go so one there, one there, right there, and two more back here. This one's already missing. One right there, and one right there. And in the fifth one, right there, there's one more way over here on this side. And that guy's located right behind this connector. If I can find it right there so it's right in the back right there okay so I'm gonna put the camera down and take those nine out and just like the DSP some of these the handles too long it's gonna interfere with the contactor so we just remove remove the bit from your extension hold it on there and use the pliers to break it loose and then you can spin it off okay the end. Here's another example where I'm just going to use the tip to remove this screw. So I'm going to break it loose with the pliers and just use my fingers to remove it because the AC contactor is in the way to use my handle. Okay, take note that this particular screw, you can see that that hole has a ground ring on it and this screw has a ground washer. So the screw with the ground washer goes right next to this current transformer in this hole. Okay, the next step. Behind these four holes, one, two, three, four, is what we call the IGBT. Maybe you can see it in there. So those four bolts hold the card onto the heat sink. So we're gonna remove those four bolts. Okay, that's going to require a 532. Right there. All right, I'm going to remove all four bolts. And just pull the bolt, the washer, and the lock washer right out. Just let it come right down. There she is. So we have a, actually a bolt and a washer. Okay, the main board is ready to come out. The last step is to remove the four screws here we talked about. And when we do that, we're going to hold these capacitors right here and take the last screw out. So take the three out. One, two, three. And the last one will come out when you're ready. Do not pry on the board. If you pry on this board, you will crack the traces inside the card. So just patience and once we remove that screw, it should come right down. Okay, I removed the last screw and it is dropping right down from the ceiling. So let's just pull it forward. It's going to come right out of the box. Good 
doing all this with one hand. So here we go. Just don't break, don't put too much pressure on it. And she's coming right down. Okay, now, as you can see, there's one wire from this connector, J12, that's still connected to the heat sink. This is the thermostat wire. It's gonna take the 332nd bit and go ahead and remove that thermostat wire and let it stay with the assembly and the card. Okay, now that the heat sink has come off, and here it is. So just grab the card. You can grab it by the capacitors, and we're gonna put it on the bench. Okay, here's the bottom of the card, and this is the IGBT that was mounted to the heat sink. So that gray substance is tacky so if you put it on something it's going to make a mess so i usually just cover it with a piece of paper okay just like that and now i'm going to flip it around all right a couple things we can do here we're going to put these screws back in four screws okay now that's done we're also going to put the DSP back with the four screws that hose the DSP on. Okay, here's the bottom view of the DSP. So you can see all the pins. There's two rows of two sets. So two sets, one set here, one set there. And we're going to turn that around. So that long set is going to line up with this 32-pin jack. Now what I'll do is if these four bolts line up when I insert the pins then I am very confident that it's aligned correctly so I'm gonna put the phone down the camera down and go ahead and put those in okay the four holes are lining up perfect so I'm gonna push it down And if I can start those four screws with no problem, we are good to go. Here's a picture of our screws. So these four long ones is going to be for the DSP. Then there's nine more long ones for mounting the board to the heat sink. And notice one of them has a washer. We talked about where that goes. And the two short ones are for the thermostat. So we're going to use these four. Okay, now the DSP is screwed back on, so this unit is ready to be shipped to me. Do not wrap it in plastic. It's better if maybe you can wrap it in a brown paper bag, use that to cover the board for the static. Um, I'm sure you won't have any static guard material, um, but just wrap it in um, brown paper bag, uh, newspaper, something like that and then box it up and send it UPS. Now you can remove these two capacitors. Um, the four bolts there. Somewhere. If you remove those two capacitors, send them with the unit, just package them separately in the box. And that might allow you to use a shorter box. So either way, a big box, leave the capacitors, remove the capacitors, lay them down, wrap them up, might allow you to ship with a smaller box. Okay, just to do our final close up here, uh, two things. One, where we remove the IGBT, that needs to be cleaned. So you can use a scraper, scrape all that excess thermal paste off and use something like rubbing alcohol, 90% um, alcohol, some kind of cleaning agent. Just don't get a lot of stuff on the uh, wiring here. So wipe that really clean and let's put all the screws back in. So in three months from now we're not questioning where things go. This is what I'm using to clean the heat sink. But I do a lot of them. You could probably just work at it with regular rubbing alcohol. This is 99.9%. .9%. Okay, I've got all the screws back. Except the four IGBT screws. I'm going to put those in now. And this guy here with the washer. 
Okay, take note that the IGBT goes in these four holes, not the outer four holes. All right, so everything is in. We are ready to ship the card out to me. And hopefully within 30 days I can get it back to you, including shipping time. And um, look in the comments for the address where to send it. I will make another video on reinstalling the card and how to deal with the thermal paste.